I've chosen a piece of green and white chambray to make the camp shirt with. And chambray is a very basic kind of fabric. It's woven with two colors of thread. The crosswise threads are the white threads. And as I pull them away, I'm hoping that you can see that there's um, the green thread, which is the weft thread that's remaining. And that's what's giving it the texture and the lighter color than it appears. I wanted you to notice that even though this piece of fabric is pristine and looks very flat and very tidy, the selvages don't match. And here we've got roughly a half an inch difference between them, but as I come down here to the center of the fabric, that half inch changes to an inch and it gets somewhat narrower at the bottom but it's still not exactly the same. The whole point of that is just to tell you that when the fabric is folded it's a mechanical process and the machines don't always get things exactly right so don't assume that selvages are parallel and that folds run down the center of the fabric. Now, I'm going to straighten this fabric just like I did my skirt. I'm going to pull on a thread. And what looked to be fairly straight when I laid it down turns out to be way off. So while tidiness is a good thing, it's not always a reliable indicator of quality. But with this green and white thread, you can really see the grain line. I'm going from nothing at this end to nearly two inches in the middle. back some. Look at the difference. <clears throat> and that edge looked fairly square. The reason it's not is even though it was cut square, the fabric wasn't square. So it's going to be probable that I'm losing about four inches of fabric on the length that I bought because the fabric was off grain. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. <laughs> and you may need to ask for more fabric. So when you're looking at fabric in the fabric store to purchase, you want to get an idea of what that grain line is doing. So learn to identify the warp and the weft threads in the fabric while it's still on the bolt.
let's just see how much we did lose. This is how much I lost over the length of the fabric. Four and three eighths inches. That's over, well, it's almost an eighth of a yard. An eighth of a yard is four and a half inches. So that's wastage. You don't want to buy any more fabric than you have to, but there's nothing more discouraging than finding a piece of fabric that you like and buying it, come home and straighten the grain and find that you don't have enough fabric after all. And then you go back to the fabric store and guess what? They're out. So. Pay attention. And there it is. You can see this is really skewed. There's two inches off here. So I'm going to begin my pulling on the bias to make the short one long. about halfway there, so we'll do it again. Every fabric is different, but pretty much fabric is woven on grain. It just gets pulled off grain during the finishing processes and folding and getting it wrapped on bolts. It's rare, but it is possible that some fabrics are woven off grain, and some of the man-made fabrics like nylon and polyester, if they're off grain, sometimes they develop a memory, and you may work for long periods of time to try and straighten them and they're going to keep going back to the way they were, in which case, give it up. It's a bad piece of fabric. Okay, I still have a little bit more to go. Sometimes it's easier if you have a partner to help you do this, particularly if you're working on a wider with the fabric than 45 inches. This may be one of those fabrics. Maybe that's why it was on sale.
may have it. Got it. Okay. Like I said, sometimes fabrics are tough, sometimes they aren't. It's a very individual thing. <laughs> so we're going back to the marking paper. Now a camp shirt is a very simple shirt. It buttons down the front. It has a convertible collar. A convertible collar is a collar that can be worn open or buttoned up close. And it has an extended facing going down the front of the shirt where our buttons and buttonholes are. This is an extra piece of extra width of fabric, it's not an extra piece, that's cut on as a single piece. And we're also going to have a pocket. We have the long straight grain line running down the center front of the shirt. Whoops, can that, how did that happen? got one that I have to mark real quick. I grabbed a good looking pattern that was incomplete. Our grain line is running down our center front, and along that center front line are several drill marks. These are marking our button locations. Buttons sit on center. And then we have four additional drill marks, which are our pocket placement marks. And when our pocket is completed, it will sit down and each of the four corners of the pocket are going to ride on these four drill marks. So our drill marks in this instance are location references. <coughs> we have a center a back piece. We have two sleeves, a right and a left. And I'm aligning those grain lines with my marker paper. Then we have our collar. Our collar consists of an upper collar, which is the part that you actually see, and an under collar, which is the underneath part. And the under collar is very slightly smaller than the upper collar. There's an eighth of an inch difference. The upper collar is larger because it has to go further going over the bend of the collar. 
so it's very slightly larger. <clears throat> this third piece that doesn't have any notches on it at all is marked a collar template. And if you put the collar template against the collar, you'll see that it's a half an inch smaller on three sides. The whole purpose of the template is just to make sure that you've got the right sized collar for the shirt that you're working on once the collar's been constructed. You do not need to cut this out of fabric. You do not need to worry about the grain line. That's for the collar template. I'm going to shift these up a little bit more so I have room for my other collar. Now in my layouts for the camp shirt, for the skirt, and for the PJ shorts, all of my pattern pieces were pointing in the same direction. My waists were all at the top of the pieces, and the um, camp shirt is arranged the same way. <coughs> the reason for that is that there might be slight variations, or maybe not so slight, variations in the fabric. And we call those variations nap. Nap is a difference in surface texture or design. A design can be a one-way print. They can be all be houses and the chimneys can all be going in the same direction. Some prints, it doesn't make any difference which way the pattern runs all over flowers, but you may have flowers sitting in vases, in which case you're not going to want some flowers going up and some flowers going down. So we're using what's called a one-way layout, and that is the tops of all the pieces are pointing in the same direction. Some fabrics, um, velvet has a color change when you're opposing the directions. One side will look dark, one side will look light or shiny or dull. Satin will do the same thing. Velvet also, when you run your hand down it, because of the pile, It'll be smooth in one direction and rough in another direction. And you want to pay attention to how that's falling on the garment. Um, I get really irritated if I'm rubbing it against the grain, so I want the smooth side to be flowing down. But this is our camp shirt. Make sure everything is on grain and that you're not putting any part of the shirt into the selvage of the fabric.
weights, these washers are pretty heavy and they do a good job of holding the oak tag down against the fabric. But you'll notice that I am also pushing down with my hand to help make sure that things don't move. I don't care so much about this template. I just want it for a reference. Sometimes I find it useful to, when I'm citing guidelines, rather than looking across them from here and checking each end, if I come down, I can cite right along the line from here at the bottom of the shirt all the way up the neckline. These weights moved over. Now your pocket, <coughs> you can cut on the straight of the grain, or if you have a fabric that you want, you can cut it on the bias. And to cut something on the bias, we've got an alternate grain line that's running at 45 degrees. And you would orient your piece this way to uh, have your pocket cut on the bias. I didn't allow for that and the edge of my pocket is going to be falling off of my fabric so I'm going to be forced to cut this pocket on the lengthwise grain because the selvage edge of my fabric is right over here.
these rotary cutters come with in three different sizes. This is the middle size, and it's about as big as you can get if you want to be cutting curves. The one that's bigger than this is nearly this size, and it just doesn't want to go around curves worth a darn. When you're using the rotary cutter and cutting around curves, you want to be sure that you keep the roller, the blade rolling. <clears throat> you don't want to stop the blade and then try and make the curve. That's going to give you a dull spot on your blade. really don't want to cut yourself with one of these rotary cutters because it ends up being worse than a, a paper cut because there are tiny, tiny, tiny little fibers on the blade and when you cut yourself you drive those fibers into your skin and uh, it always gets infected and it's very, very painful. So keep your fingers out of the way of the blade. And when you're not using the blade, make sure it's closed. And if somebody's using a rotary cutter to cut their garment, it's not a good idea to engage them in any kind of conversation because they need to be thinking about what they're doing. Since I've <clears throat> used the rotary cutter on this, I'm going to do my notching so that I can move these pieces out of my way. Make sure that you've got all of your notches made so that you can see them before you take your weights off and fold it up. running my scissor along to catch any little skips.
I'm not worrying about the template. I am going to free it from all the extra paper. right here is a an example of what happens when you pull too hard you get a little run in your fabric I think we're going to be okay now if you have to move fabric when you've got weights on it and it's not pinned be sure that you try and keep it as much on grain as you possibly can. So as I pull, I'm trying to pull it evenly across the table, not pulling on one corner. Of course, if I had any fabric sticking out beyond the edges of my pattern pieces, I would pause and realign things. This is what I mean by getting things out of alignment here. When I shifted it, it kind of pulled it a little bit. So I want to make sure that I realign it.
you know what I forgot? I forgot to mark my drill marks. So I'm going to have to go back to my pattern piece. Now at this point, I'm just trying to put the marks on my marker paper. And then to help me remember where they are, because the marks are kind of small, drawing a circle around them so that they're more obvious. Bring out the awl again, and I'm going to put the awl down firmly against the cutting surface, and I'm going to reach and pull the fabric up so that the awl comes through about a half an inch on the other side. And I'm doing this kind of gently because the chambray has a tendency to want to pull. So you can see what I'm talking about, the poles in the fabric, the long green lines coming across. Now I may be able to work those out with my fingernail <clears throat> a little bit, but you want to try and avoid that. And the way to do that is to have a good sharp awl and make sure that you've got it firmly against the cutting surface when you pull up. done three different methods of um, con developing layouts or markers into review markers are one-time pattern layouts used to cut fabric for garments in the industry they're much larger and more intricate than these because we're cutting a single garment at a time we cut single lays of fabric on our PJ shorts and on our camp shirt, on our skirt, and our t-shirt, we cut on the fold, which is a technique that's not frequently used in the industry because they can get better utilization of the fabric and less wastage if they lay everything out flat. The important things are to remember that long double-ended arrow that says lengthwise grain of the fabric has to be precisely on the lengthwise grain of the fabric. And the marker paper helps us do that but before we can use the marker paper efficiently, we have to have our fabric true and square. And that's why we spend a lot of time tearing and pulling threads and tugging on fabric, was to realign the warp and the weft so that they're at 90 degree angles to each other. That way your garment will hang properly on your body. Good luck in your sewing. It's been a pleasure to be here and thank you very much. <laughs>